Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 3. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to today's episode as we take on Celta Vigo in the Copa del Rey. Before we take on Celta Vigo B in the league. Since you guys were last here, we've only played the one game off camera and it was a bit of a nightmare. You were last here for when we lost 4-1 to Elche and in between episodes we lost 4-1 to Albacete. I'll be honest, we did play a rotated lineup for this game. I'm trying to rest the players up as much as I possibly can do for this game against Celta Vigo. Win this game against Celta Vigo and we could have a really good cup run this season. So I'm trying to put all my eggs into this basket. One loss in the league. I could, I, could, I could handle that, I think. We'll see. The league itself is still looking relatively good for us. We are currently fifth as it stands right now on 38 points. We are a few points behind Real Sporting, Gahan and Tenerife. They're probably going to end up winning the league and get promoted themselves. Barcelona B and Valencia B, they're also ahead of us. But we don't have to worry about them because they can't get promoted. The only issue is... Cordoba, Lugo, Alaves, Eibar, Villarreal B, even Oviedo, Balacano, Castellon, they are right on our tails. It's so tight still with not long left to go this season. So anything can still happen. For the game against Celta Vigo from La Liga, we are going to go for that flat back five. I think that's the best formation we have to go for in this particular situation. Dikene still on international duty. Uh, he's not actually playing games, I don't think. Oh, he is playing games. Has he played many games? Oh, he's actually played all of them. I didn't think he was playing games, but Dikene has played all their games. I'm going to say I was quite annoyed if he wasn't playing for Mali, but he is actually still playing games for Mali. So, um, as you can see, he's doing very, very well. He's through to the quarterfinals against Algeria. They played tomorrow. I imagine they'll lose that game, so he might come back to us very quickly. But we are going to play Gonzalez in goal, who has done particularly well apart from the previous two fixtures. Zarate, Diego, Cajinde and Dio Garcia make up four of the back line. Unfortunately, Dominguez is injured and Cesar is suspended. And what that means is that Andre Chitigel is going to sit in the middle of that back five. So hopefully he's going to fix the this match for us. A slightly isolated midfield duo of Cipollina and John starting today with Timo Wolf on the left, the outgoing Zabalaga on the right and JD Meakin leading the line. So as kickoff is upon us here today, inside of 60 seconds there's a chance for Celta Vigo to score from a corner which they haven't done which is very good. Come on let's not... Let's not concede like that, and we have done. They've scored within 90 seconds of the game kicking off. It's a very good goal. I'll be honest, I feel like there's a bit of luck in there. You know, it's not like they've just worked through us completely. They've just had a lucky shot from the edge of the area, found a little gap. Gonzalez maybe should have done a bit better. We can fight back. This also is a bit of a test, I must say, actually. Uh, we potentially could be going up to La Liga next season if we stay in the playoffs and end up winning the playoffs. So... This could be a little bit of a test as to how good we could be heading into next season. We do have a highlight going in our favour. Andre Shitty just take this free kick. Come on, lad. Top bins. Oh, he's nearly done it as well. Resulting corn is being put in by Diego. I don't think anything will happen from this one, unfortunately. Timo Wolf collects the loose ball, but I imagine the highlight will finish. Unless, of course, he's brought down in the area. Penalty. It's a goal kick. What are you on about, referee? Free kick at the other end of the pitch for Celta Vigo. A good clearance there. Fran Beltran chasing that ball down for Celta Vigo, though, into their midfielder. Come on, let's get the challenge in there sorted as Fran Beltran puts a great ball forward and Gonzalez forced to make a really good save. That was a very nice move from Celta Vigo. At the other end of the pitch, highlights are coming thick and fast. Come on, let's get... Oh, we thought it was going to just fall nicely there for Timo Wolff. Didn't fall nicely for Timo Wolf, but we do win possession back and just give it away straight away again. Boys, let's not be so hasty trying to get that ball forward as Gallo gets a shot away for Celta Vigo and we manage to stay just one goal behind. I've got to say, this is a tense match so far. A pretty tense match as Timo Wolf is coming forward off that resulting corner. Brought down. Right, red card. Referee, get your red card out for that one. I don't think there even was a card there. I feel like we've given a good account of ourselves so far. I'm pretty pleased with how we've been performing. I mean, we've only had one shot so far this game. Uh, we want, we're not expecting to have many shots, I must say. But I'd like to see us have more than one. We're still in it, though. That's the main thing. Dressing room, I'm going to throw a bottle. Far from pleased from what I've just seen. Everyone apart from Raul Zabalaga seems motivated by that. So hopefully if 11 players step their game or 10 players step their game up and Raul Zabalaga sort of stay. Oh, he's injured, Raul Zabalaga, I've just seen. He's got a small knock. We might have to take him off because it might be more advantageous to bring a fully fit Casado on who can work the channels nicely. We'll bring him off in a second. Let's watch this highlight of Shitigel. Misses a sliding tackle there, unfortunately. Garcia still coming forward, putting it just over the bar. Zabalaga on a 6.4 as well. He's going down in his ratings. Let's see what he can do here. 
not much because he just look, <laughs> kicks the ball as hard as he can into one of the self ego players. Does get behind the defence though, shoots and it's oh, not going to count unfortunately. Right, let's get him off the pitch then. He's a little tired. Giovanni Casado on you come instead. Mika not having the best of games. Raul Jr. on you come too. Let's confirm those changes. As Timo Wolf shoots, it's... Ooh, that somehow nearly went in the back of the net. We, I think it was a throw-in on the far side of the pitch and obviously it worked its way into the area quite nicely. Come on, finish the highlights. Huge tackle from Kahinde there as Zarate clears it. Mm, straight for a corner though, apparently, which they've put over the bar. Loads of highlights in this game. Absolutely loads of them. Let's go a bit more attacking in this game. Let's say demands more. And I'm tempted to potentially push our, our wing backs a bit further up the field as well in the final 30 minutes or so. We're 1-0 down. We've not really got anything to lose at this stage. So we may as well try and push some players forward a little bit with 20 minutes or so to go. Let's push Zarate forward. Let's push Dio Garcia forward. And I'm tempted to take John off the pitch, who's mm, Chipley has not played brilliantly either. Scott Marshall on you come as well. We'll make that change in the middle of the park. Come on, boys. I believe in us. Let's at least try and take this to extra time. If Timo Wolf is booked for a foul, and it's a free kick being swung into the middle, and it's oh, put in the back of a net. I don't think that had anything to do with us pushing ourselves forward. It was from a dead ball situation where they've just got the better of us, unfortunately. So that might be the game done and dusted. But still, to Vigo are a top 10 La Liga side. They're very, very good. The fact that we have, you know, only scored or conceded two goals to them, I think is a good testament. Shows how strong we potentially actually are. Gonzalez, for the most part, has had a good game. Dio Garcia with a free kick now. Uh, a yellow card, sorry, giving away a free kick, which they've scored. I'll tell you what though, all three of Celta Vigo's goals have come from set pieces. The first one obviously was a little extension of a set piece, but the second and third have come from set pieces. They're not really getting the opportunities from open play. So I th I really think, you know, the scoreline doesn't do justice to how well we actually played there. So we may be out of the Copa del Rey at the fourth round. We've matched the furthest we've ever got in that competition before. Other fixtures aren't going really in our favour, although nothing to really worry about. Albacete, by the way, he beat us 4-1. Uh, they were in the relegation zone. They've just got themselves out of the relegation zone, but that was a bit of an embarrassing game to lose to. But I wanted to make sure the best lineup possible was fit for the game against Celta Vigo, just in case we could win, obviously, we couldn't. Something did happen off camera, which I've completely forgotten to tell you about. It's not that big. You kind of knew about it already. Uh, Unai Zabala, he's left. Uh, that club that bid £10,000 for him. We convinced the ball that £10,000 was enough to let him go. So Unai Zabala has gone and is saving us a big chunk in wages. It is deadline day today. That's what made me think of it. But uh, we're not going to have any more deadline day stuff going on. Unfortunately, we haven't really been able to shift Julio Iglesias. Uh, transfer offer to clubs. 500 pounds i offered him for a grand 500 pounds just get him out the club just try and save some wages on him for the end of the season i don't think anyone will bid for him though unfortunately his contract does expire at the end of the season anyway so clubs just think what's the point paying money for him now we'll get him for free later on but there are some deadline day bids though by looks of things uh, no offers for iglesias unfortunately but uh lots of i presume these are all loan offers cornella wants a uh, jack batty tell you what make him an important player suggest that Mm, they say regular starter and I've got rid of all that monthly playing fee. Um, we'll, we'll let him go anyway. I feel like a good loan move for him might do him well for the rest of the season. Uh, Joshua is wanted on loan by several clubs. To be fair to him, he's a very good player. He's made five appearances for our first team this season. Two starts and three off the bench. What division are these clubs in? Lagronis are two divisions below us. This team are also two divisions below us. And this team are also two divisions below us. Uh, Lagronis, though, they're near the top of their table. They're sixth. This team have the worst facilities. I've just gone through and checked them. This team have the worst facilities, so we will reject that one. We won't let him go there. Uh, but mm, squad player at Lagronis, this team wants him as a regular starter. So Lagronis will say no to because we don't want that. Uh, I am happy to let Josho go, I think, on loan for the rest of the season. He'll come back a better player. Uh, can you make him an important player? Suggest. They say yes. Well, there we go. Excellent stuff. Good luck, Josh O. All right, look at this. I've just noticed the camera stopped working. Don't know how long that was going on for, um, but <laughs> I'll sort this out. I was moving cables around earlier on. I think it's a cable that just came a little bit loose because I was moving them around earlier on, trying to just sort of do
do some cable management. With a couple of players out on loan though, this does give us an opportunity to try and promote one or two players to give them a go. Is there anyone that we want to give a go to? Lee Robinson as a fullback, I don't think he's really ready. Uh, the same with John Barrett, I don't think he's really ready yet. Also, De Kenne's still on international duty, so he's still doing absolute bits for Mali by looks of things in goal. He might win the African Cup of Nations here. 3-0 they beat Algeria, 3-0 they've just got to beat the Ivory Coast and they, they could be into the final. Right, for the lineup against Celta Vigo B, I think we'll push the wing backs up a little bit. We'll keep the five at the back formation. Uh, but push these guys up as wing backs. We will bring back on the pitch Cesar instead of Shitajel, who will go on the bench. Other than that, Timo Wolf looking a bit tired, so we'll bring Daz Finley on for this particular game. Let's give Raul Jr. another go. Uh, he's just not hit the highs this season, Raul Jr. It's such a shame. First highlight of the game then, Dio Garcia gets it into Raul Zabalaga right down to the byline. And Raul Jr., oh, he's just not been in form this season. That's the sort of opportunity he buried nine times out of ten, you know, the previous three seasons. This season, they, it's turned to one times out of ten. I don't really know what's happened to him, if I'm honest with you. It's just this season he's slowed down, and it's a great shame because he's such a great striker. We've got through to nearly half time though, 44 minutes on the clock, and Raul Zabalaga gives us the lead in this game. From one route to another, this season is Raul Zabalaga's season, although, of course, he is leaving to go to Athletic Bilbao next time around after rejecting a contract offer from us. I can kind of understand it, to be fair. I'm sure you can understand it as well. He's, uh, it's, it's, it doesn't make it any less upsetting, though. Into the second half we go then. At Cesar on the ball into Scott Marshall up to Raul Zabalaga. Looking to come forward with a bit of pace again. Dio Garcia on the overlap quite nicely. Come on, Dio Garcia. It's a great ball across and Daz Finley hits the post. That was so unlucky. Daz Finley back on the ball again, though. Can he turn into the provider this time around? With a great cross into the middle. Raul Zabalaga this time hits the post. We're getting very unlucky. As it stands right now, we stay fifth in the table. We go, on, go ahead of Real, uh, Barcelona beat, sorry I should say. Uh, they obviously don't get the playoff place, neither do Valencia, so um, these two teams you can ignore. It's fifth down we need to be sort of worried about and right now we look to be in a good position. We're not in a good position right now, are we? You hate to see it. Eight minutes to go. We couldn't quite hold on and it's a... Uh, oh, the, the first man just flicks in a little bit. That's a bit frustrating. And there's nothing we can really do about it by looks of things. As the clock ticks down, not many highlights in this game. We should have taken opportunities when we could have done. We hit the post twice instead and we're sort of made to rue it a little bit. So let's look at the league table then after this one. Uh, and also, I think we should probably go forward to just see how De Kenne does on the third. Can he make an African Cup of Nations final? We drop down to seventh in the table then. Uh, other games were kicking off later on in the day and other results not quite going in our favour. But Rayo Vallecano are still quite a few points behind us, which is very nice. Six points behind us. So we're still in a great position to actually get playoffs this season. I think next episode we're going to come back for that Valencia B game. That's going to be a very tight one for us at the top of the table and we'll come back for Fuen Labrada too because that'll be quite an interesting game to play. The next 10 games or so this season are really, really important for us if we want to be getting playoffs this season. We're right on the edge. I'm not sure if we're going to have enough steam to get through it all. So it's the 4th of February now. It still says De Kenne is on international duty. Did he win that semi-final schedule? They won the semi-final on penalties. He's a penalty hero and he's going into the cup final against Cameroon. I tell you what, today's episode is not ending here. We're watching this game. I've clicked attend. We're watching that game. This is mental. Our goalkeeper could be about to win the African Cup of Nations with Mali. You can't make it up. He's 21 years old. We got him on a free transfer because this club didn't want him. We brought him up through the divisions. He's been a great keeper for us. Player of the season most seasons, in my opinion, for us. And he's on the cusp of continental glory for a second division team in Spain. Oh, it's amazing. He's the hero of Gibraltar, in my opinion. The hero of Gibraltar. Even though he's not playing for Gibraltar, he's, he's still the hero. It doesn't actually take that long to get Gibraltar to in game so he may have Gibraltar nationality obviously he can't switch teams now unfortunately but he, we love him he, he's one of our own right this is quite exciting then we can just sit back relax and not have to worry about anything we don't want Cameroon stats 
Uh, we want to get, obviously, the Marley stats up. We want to be seeing how Dekene gets on. Marley are in the white. Cameroon are in the green. Dekene, make a good save here, please. I'm trusting you. I believe in you. I want Dekene to have a really good performance here today. And he's, boy, he's, he's right on form. You know, he was diving there in case he needed to dive there. What a player. I absolutely love Dekene. He could be one of my favourite players in this save now. Just because of this moment, more than anything else, he's got to an African Cup of Nations final. I'm so happy for him. There he is, sitting on a 6.7. He is the hero as Cameroon look to come forward again. Come on. we Come on, boys. Get the challenge in there. We're all Marley fans right now. If only I had a Marley top, I'd be wearing it. I'd have a Marley scarf. I'd be swinging that around. If I knew the Marley chants, I'd be singing them. In fact, we can make our own at Ford Dekene, can't we? Come on, Dekene. Come on, Dekene. You, 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 you. Come on, Dekene. I, I, I'm a genius. Oh, Dekene. He is... Marley have just scored. Uh, I can't go back because I was trying to sing a, a sing a chant or make a chant up and I messed it up, stopped singing, and then instantly they just score a goal. But it doesn't matter too much because we're not playing, but Marley have just scored. Dear Kenne is magic. He wears a magic hat. If you shoot the ball at him, he'll save it in his arms. He plays in pink for Marley's men. And when we win the cup, we'll sing this song again. That's the chant. That's the chant. Half time then. Marley are one the up. This is beautiful. I can't believe it. Our goalkeeper is about to win the African Cup of Nations. It's a free kick. Basuma takes. It's cleared. I mean, Dekene, his value is going to skyrocket after this. You know, there's potential for us. I know we're recapitalizing this, aren't I? But there's potential for us to sell him on for millions after this. Millions. And that could save the club massively. We know Gonzalez is a good keeper, a very good deputy. Uh, I can't wait to get the Kenny back and play for us for the rest of this season. But if he wins this, his value should go through the roof, you'd imagine. Because he's just won a continental competition. I'm demanding at least £10 million for him if this happens. £10 million at a minimum for the African Cup of Nations winning goalkeeper. He is absolutely superb. Unless, of course, Cameroon... Oh, no, you hate to see it. I'm, I'm jinxing it. I'm jinxing it. Don't worry, Dikene. There's not much you could do about that. There's not really much at all you could do about that. That was a, a real pile driver of a shot. It's, you know, I'd say, if anything, that's probably the best goal that's ever been scored in the world. Like, no keeper in the world ever, in all of history, was ever going to stop that. So, you know, sometimes these things happen. There is a chance, though, for Marley at the other end of the pitch. Basuma, Torre... Torre coming forward. Come on, get that in the middle. Oh, come on. Marley, get a goal out of this game, please. Another one. They are playing much better in the second half now as well. I believe in them. It's a great ball forward. There we... How is that not in the back of a net? That, superb keeping. He's been making notes and taking lessons off the Kenne, the Cameroon goalkeeper, to pull off a save like that. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's a penalty for Cameroon. De Kenne. Come on, my son. I believe in you. You can do it. Oh, he nearly did it as well. He nearly did it. He got so close to it. So close. Oh, how close was it? Oh, I was fingertips, probably. You can't see very well on the screen. You, didn't, you can't see very well. Oh, unfortunately, though, the clock is ticking down. Come on, Dekene, get a good assist here. Just... Just score a goal, please, Marley. We just needed to, to take it to extra time or something like that. As Torre coming forward for Marley, driving forward, plays it back into another Torre, into another Torre. Oh, Marley. Oh, no. I can't believe it. The clock's ticking down. De Kenne. Oh, I feel, I feel, I'm heartbroken for, we don't want to see this. We don't want to see that. Get it, get it off the screen. Get it off the screen. Thank you. Oh, you hate to see it. Nice to know that I was spotted at the stadium, though. Uh, obviously looking after my keeper, De Kenne. Oh, I feel terrible for him. And his value's only got up to £105,000. It's not that much. We can still try and demand millions from him, though. But we're proud of him, all right? We're all proud of De Kenne. We love you. So all the people in the comment section that say I'm pronouncing his name wrong, I know I am. Um, I, I, I'm fully aware of that now. But I can't stop. De Kenne it is. So that is going to be the end of today's episode. Um, of course, if you have enjoyed it, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I will see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.